Welcome to my series of tutorials covering the production of practical procedural sound effects for Unity and Unreal Engine. We will look at how procedural audio techniques can enhance game audio without the myriad of sample libraries we sound designers tend to use. In this video I will explain what I mean by procedural audio, why you might want to use these techniques, where they are most advantageous, how I implement procedural audio and future developments which will make life easier, the challenges faced in implementing procedural audio, and some useful references to get you started. Andy Farnell is one of the pioneers in procedural audio sound design and said, procedural audio is a philosophy about sound being a process and not data. Here I will interpret that as developing physical models for generating sound effects. When we look at programming in more detail, I'll go through various models and show you how they can be implemented. The models will seek to replicate the main features of a sound in a computationally efficient way and capture the essence of a sound so we can develop immersive effects. Samples have dominated game audio since the 90s and are the main element of all game audio engines. But a sample is always static, and although samples can be layered and cross-faded to create a dynamic feel, they cannot give the same level of control in gameplay that procedural audio effects can, can deliver. Also, once developed, a procedural audio effect is simpler to integrate into gameplay with meaningful, exposed variables. The role of a sound effect is to immerse the listener in the game and provide dramatic impact, but not necessarily realism. A good example is a fight scene, where a whoosh is, of, is often preceded by the impact sound, so to give the impression of speed, but not something heard in reality. Procedural audio allows the parameters of an effect to be pushed to the max, with the addition of other additional sound effects from other models. The whoosh you heard came from a helicopter model. Finally, with modern multi-core processors, the CPU overhead of procedural audio is much less significant, making their use far more practical. So when to use it? Procedural audio is particularly effective for background environment sounds such as wind and rain, where samples could become repetitive. I'll include examples of how this can be implemented. Repeating effects where variation is needed, such as punches, are also very effective, as only slight adjustments are needed for different characters and situations. For example, the speed of a strike from the gameplay parameters and a hit versus a miss using the same model. Building effects requires a language that generates fast and predictable executables. In this series, I'll demonstrate how I develop C++ Unity plugins using the Juice framework. For Unreal Engine, UE5 is due for release soon, and I will demonstrate Metasound, which is a graphical DSP graph that generates C++ code. This will certainly be the way to produce procedural audio for UE in the future. When creating procedural audio code, there are three main components. First is the control signal that determines the audio generated, for example, wind speed or walking speed. Second is the code that generates the audio, such as an impulse, chaotic noise or a pitch tone. Finally, the shape, size and material of the object may cause resonance, such as a large wooden door squeaking, or the resonance from the body of a cricket when it makes its call, or the exhaust pipe of an engine. We will see these in action when we build our models. At the start, I quoted Andy Farnell from 10 years ago, but still procedural audio is not a widely used technique. Back in 2009, the, the game Spore was released, which used pure data to generate audio. But since then, the game industry has been largely silent on the subject. Although I suspect it is used by some AAA game studios now, but their work is shrouded in secrecy. There is a reasonably steep learning curve as DSP program is quite a specialist field. C-type languages are the main choice with C++ being the most common and you will almost immediately be confronted with more advanced techniques such as multi-threaded programming, atomic variables, audio threads are always separate from the game and GUI threads 
And then there are the issues of data with denormalised floats, which many programmers have never heard of, but are big in DSP program, more of which later. But to be honest, once you've seen these things a couple of times, they become second nature. Finally, the game engines themselves create problems. In Unity, you will see on audio filter read. This is the only way c -sharp scripts can access the audio thread, but there's no timing link between the game and audio threads, so there's always a latency or unpredictability. UE4 is a little better, as there is a comprehensive C++ API and Quartz to help with timing. UE5 will bring Metasounds, which run sample accurate timings without C++ code. My next video will look at audio in Unity, but in the meantime I have some resources you may find useful. If you buy one book, then I would recommend Designing a Sound by Andy Farnell. This is my go-to book and covers procedural audio from the ground up with full models using pure data. The PD models are easily translated into Metasounds and can even be used as the basis for C++ code. Also, there are detailed descriptions of the physical models used. Real Sound Synthesis for Interactive Applications by Perry R. Cook is more about using synthesis techniques to generate various types of sound, but still very useful. Next is a link to a demo project demonstrating the Unity native audio plugin SDK. Within this project, I found a small routine plugin, which has proved very useful, and I'll show how I've modified this to use within Unity projects. Finally, I've provided a link to UE5 Metasound, which makes procedural audio much more accessible, as I will demonstrate later. Currently, it's in early access, but many of the techniques I will show can be implemented already. Thanks for watching. After the next introductory video, I'll be coding, and this will be available on GitHub. Links to the resources are included below. Hope to see you soon.